So when you study this, this work hand in hand with the with mythologies of our people, you will now know that it was to Nigeria that came to set up a civilization among the cavemen. And the Umri mythology says that when this god man came in his space, in his air boat, let me put that way, that when he came, he met cavemen. Ezeri today talks about this. In the recent book he wrote, talked about it. Even when we visited him for interview, he talked about the same thing. And when our father, the Eri, God man, came, he met cave people who didn't know how to farm or do anything. We were the ones who taught them to farm, taught them to trade, taught them this and that. The same story is found in the world of thought. What researchers do now, nowadays, is that they try to do this comparative cultural studies, comparative linguistic studies, to see who and who belong together in culture and in language. Languages that borrow from one another, or languages that emanated from another, you, how do you study to know that? They use what they call uh, uh, comparative linguistics, whereby cognates tell you languages that borrow from other languages and languages that were born from other languages. When you apply the uh, theory of cognates with Hebrew and a number of other world languages, you will find that there are so many Igbo cognates in languages around the world. You pick one language and you see about seven or eight or nine or twenty Igbo cognates in that one. And a cognate is a word that has the same sound and the same meaning in one language and another language. So that similar sound and similar meaning shows relationship. It doesn't happen by chance. It could happen once, not twice, not twice. It can happen five, six, seven times in two, two languages. So we have done a lot of that. The study of cognates, we did a lot of that in this book to show places where Igbo language was the first language spoken. You wouldn't believe that the basic words, basic words in Chinese, were Igbo words. Like in Chinese, believe that the basic words, basic words in Chinese, were Igbo words. Like in Chinese, li is to get up. Fair is to fly, ga is to go, and a lot of what I so basic words like that, which means that the first people who spoke the language before it became complicated and all that might have spoken it anymore. And then, but they also the, the, the relationship goes further than that. Akkadian, we compare Igbo and the Akkadian language. Akkadian is the mother of Semitic. Semitic is the mother of Hebrew, and all of them are the children of Canaanite. Canaanite has so many words that are Igbo, so many. You will find them when you have time to read it. You will find if you also take time to read the works, you will find them. So many Igbo words, so many. The same, the same, so let me just take a, uh, this example. Well, uh, the word cosmos, the Greek word cosmos, is derived from Canaanite. Kyo S N. Question. In Canaanite, it means spread. To, to spread out, to spread outwards. Kwasama, to spread outwards. In Igbo, Kwasama is to spread outwards. Another word, Goya, the word Gaia. You know the planet Gaia? You know about the planet Gaia? Yes. Planet Gaia in Greek mythology was the, the, the original Earth before this Earth. The, the old, the ancient mother planet that gave birth to Earth. In ancient mythologies, the Sumerians say that this planet was rammed into by another planet from outside our solar system. It broke into two. And then the one that won, another, the, the other half was rammed into again and it fell into pieces and became the asteroid belt. But while the, the, the bigger one that remained closed up, the wound closed up with water and became Earth. And that side that closed up with water is the Pacific. That's what the Pacific is, miles and miles deep. Pacific is miles and miles deep because it's, it has a big hole, has a big wound. Now that Gaia, the planet Gaia, the ancient planet Gaia, gave its name as a raven of water, a deep wound covered with water. 
because it's, it has a big hole, has a big wound. Now that Gaia, the planet Gaia, the ancient planet Gaia, gained its name as a raven of water, a deep wound covered with water. That is the, 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 the origin of the name Gaia. That's the Greek word Gaia, but it's derived from Canaanite, Goye, Goye, which means raven of water, raven of water, Goye. And here is water, river, in Hebrew, which is the child of the Canaanite. Goye, in other words, you break it down, it's Goye and the water, eh? Goye and water. In Hebrew, Goye is a raven of water. Goye, you know that? Iyi, Iyi is water. Go is raven, is valley, raven, deep wood. Yes, deep wood, yes. So, Goye, Canaanite Goye, raven of water, is even Goye, raven of water. Now, take, you know, now, see, cosmos. And cos where, do, where does what cosmos come from? Cos from very far. Cosmos is cosmos. It's the whole universe. Imagine that that word is an Igbo word, which means the time the Igbo began to, you know, the Igbo language comes from very far away. It's a cosmic language. Let me also, let me give you something that will keep you busy. Suggest, but not just suggest, imply and insist that Eden was located in West Africa. Not only West Africa, Nigeria. Not only Nigeria. South, southern region of Nigeria, southeastern region of Nigeria, including the Niger Delta. Why do you think it doesn't come? Why does it want to come out? So the uh, okay, um, the Torah, the Torah. You know the Torah. The Torah is the Hebrew ancient uh, text, scripture. From which uh, Torah, okay, from which uh, the other Bible, Old Testament was derived. A researcher, an orator researcher, Ralph Ellis, did intense research, intensive research on the Torah and comparing the language and the culture of the Hebrews with that of the Egyptians. And this conclusion, in many works, in a series of books, are that the Hebrew have no culture of their own, that their culture is Egyptian. But our own research has already proved here and there that Egyptian culture and language, the words they use are mostly evil, mostly. The, method, the, the philosophy of math is the same thing we call Ijoku. Mind you, the words. We studied series and series of words. They all derived from Igbo. Words of Igbo sound that similar sound that means Igbo language. We studied the hieroglyphics and most of the Egyptian hieroglyphics we find them in among the Igbo artifacts and among the ACS substones. Those of you in the arts will know about the ACS substones in Kwara State in Yoruba land. The substones there are thousands and thousands in number, and they are all wearing things. They have, they have um, decorations on them. We analyze their decorations. We analyze what they were putting on their heads. We analyze their necklaces, and we found Egyptian hieroglyphics and derived from those most of those. So, our ancient symbols are not just symbols; they were writings. There was a time when these symbols were writings. If you, uh, let me not be distracted. I was talking about, um, what was I talking about? The cosmos, the first cosmos. Taurus. I was talking about the right, the Eden. I said Eden was a Nigerian location for many, many, many reasons. You need to pick up these books and make them your, li your personal library. What we have in these books, we can't finish talking about you gave me a thousand hours, I wouldn't finish. I wouldn't even, you know, uh, scratch the surface of the information we have. 